Hello, I'm Aneta Mirano. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Empowering Teachers Worldwide. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about language portfolios. I know that many of you have been using portfolios for a long time, but some others have not, and they have asked me what it is that portfolios are used for and what they are exactly. So, to begin with, language portfolios are a collection of individual students' work put together in a file, in a ring binder, online also. They belong to the student and they can be updated as language learning continues and we are adding and taking away pieces of work. Uh, what are the benefits of a language portfolio? It's an easy and creative way to track and record all that classroom activity information that you have. It helps the students get involved in recognizing their own progress. And let's face it, it can make your job giving final grades a lot more accurate. But there are some questions to be asked before we start using portfolios. It's important to ask yourself uh, certain questions when considering using a portfolio. Mm -hmm. These questions, the answers to these questions will definitely help you decide if portfolios are useful for you or not. So, do you provide a report at the end of a semester or the year with a detailed information on students' uh, achievement and progress? Is assessment a part of an ongoing improvement program? Are you assessing individual and group achievement of objectives on authentic tasks? And finally, can you showcase students' portfolio work to support your final evaluations to parents and administrators? Depending on the answers, you're going to decide whether portfolios are a good idea for you or not. Let's have a look at the functions or the types of portfolios. Uh, we have the showcase or presentation portfolio. This is a collection of best work. The content that's added to showcase portfolios is written after the learning takes place, often with reflection from the student. And it involves sharing student work with others, probably beyond the classroom, and actively seeking feedback from the audience. The showcase portfolio is often used to share the students' best achievement or best evidence of learning. And they are generally, the students are generally given a choice to decide what is published in this portfolio. Then we have the process or learning portfolio, which shows work in progress. It's uh, the, the one we commonly see as more of a running record of learning and the purpose is to capture the learning process. It is also called a development portfolio, uh, also reflection portfolio, formative portfolio. Entries and artifacts are added during the learning process. Um, a process portfolio is not always a collection of the student's best work. It can include a variety of learning attempts, unpolished documentation, reflections on struggles, on challenges. And this type of portfolios demonstrate a work in progress and they allow for self-assessment and reflection. The third type is the assessment portfolio and it is used for accountability. It is used to document what a student has learned or to demonstrate that they have mastered elements of the curriculum. This type of portfolios, honestly, may not be the most popular choice for schools as they are not student-centered. So artifacts, for example, are chosen based on the curriculum and while they may be very useful within the school environment to provide evidence of learning to teachers and administrators, it may be less useful for overall student development. Finally, the fourth type of portfolio is the hybrid approach. And uh, it's a combination of the showcase, the process, and the assessment portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, so mm, 
Some educators find it easiest to start out with a showcase portfolio or a collection of best work. So from there, they can evolve into the process or the hybrid approach. You might also find your own portfolios, fluid in nature, for example, and the students' portfolio, they, they should be fluid. That is, students may move pieces from a process portfolio into an assessment or a showcase portfolio. That is, uh, being flexible. Mm -hmm. Now, let's have a look at the parts of a portfolio. Um, we have, of course, the cover of a portfolio where we have the name of the student, the class, etc. Then the passport. The passport contains factual information about the language learner. It gives a history of the learner's language learning experiences, which in this case will refer to English, because of course, portfolios can be used in any subject. This may also contain certificates, qualifications that you, uh, show the student's level, a certificate from a summer camp, a qualification obtained from taking an exam, an international exam. Um, it may include, for example, a ticket to a theatre production in English, a film they saw, a trip abroad to an English-speaking country. Then we have the language biography. Uh, the biography section of portfolios is a, the documentation of the learner's personal language learning history. And it can include, for example, a short narrative about the summer camp they attended and for which they may include a certificate of attendance in the passport section. Mm -hmm. And we also have a dossier. A dossier is a collection of coursework that shows the learner's level of English. It may include corrected class work, homework, tests, exams, any other piece of work which illustrates where the learner is at. In this part of the portfolio, the learner may include voice or video recordings, or any part of project work they have done. Now, how do we design a portfolio? Okay, first of all, you need to gather the materials that you will need. If you're making uh, physical portfolios, um, you will need uh, ring binders, subdividers, etc. Here is a, a list of materials that you may need. So. You can make a wish list and uh, give the students some of the responsibility for collecting the materials. However, it's always good practice to have a healthy supply of the basics available for standardizing aspects. For example, types of dividers within the portfolio. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the divisions. A portfolio may be divided into the types of tasks that will be done in class. So here you have some examples. So divide a portfolio by tasks so that it is very easy to find the activity and instructions for the next class. Um, and this will help the students concentrate on each type of task when they are reviewing their progress. Then we have the organizational divisions. In addition to the task sections, you will want to include a section at the front for reference documents that apply to the entire course. And these documents will be the objectives chart, the course calendar, a set of classroom rules that uh, will tell the students how to go around, about using their portfolio, portfolio guidelines, and a glossary. Uh, it's a good idea to close the portfolio with a glossary section with blank pages for the students to note down any new vocabulary that they have learned so that they have uh, that as quick and easy references. So now you have the sections divided and the materials ready. Mm -hmm. But we are not done with the planning stage yet. Let's get those reference materials ready before displaying the portfolio to the students. These documents will be the go-to place for students to review course objectives or lesson objectives, calendar expectations. So, when we prepare reference materials, the first thing that we need to do is 
unveil the course objectives. Students like to know what they are going to get out of the language classroom, so display the objectives with a chart. Basic objectives are the headers that show students where you will be taking them. Mm -hmm. And you will typically find these in the curriculum. They are the learning objectives, learning aims, learning intentions. Under each heading goes a specific language item they are going to learn. For example, communicating complete sentences. And then we have color-coded cells that indicate the tasks that are going to be involved. For example, role plays, interviews, etc. Hand out a copy of this same chart to the students to include in the index section of the portfolio. Then we may have a calendar, a calendar, a course calendar to identify the milestones. These are the clearest way to share progressive information. They get everyone looking at the same spot and marking off the same milestones. Turn a Word document sideways, for example, into landscape mode and create a calendar that covers each block of time in your course, a week, a month, a trimester, uh, you decide. Fill the calendar with main objectives, sub-objectives and tasks. You can include evaluation dates, due dates, all sorts of important dates. Mm -hmm. And leave space for your students to note any additions or changes that are made to the schedule. This is, um, for example, this is one that I uh, um, found on the internet, which is very useful. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're working online, uh, this is great. Each cell in the chart represents a milestone. So begin each class by checking out what is up to date, what was done yesterday or the previous class, and what is expected for, for the next class. Mm -hmm. And then model and explain the uh, portfolio to the students. Introduce the portfolio to the class. The first day of class, uh, show your own portfolio, show them how you have divided the sections, how each section has pages that guide you throughout the course, and drop the bomb. Tell them that they are going to create the same portfolio for themselves, that they will work on this portfolio every day, and that every project, essay, test, etc., will be recorded in the portfolio, and this is going to happen from the first day to the last day of the class. This portfolio will not only be a record of their work, it will be a part of the final grade. So it will be an ongoing tool for both you and them as learners. Mm -hmm. Because they will stay up to date on progress, on what works, on what doesn't, on what needs improvement. Explain all this to the students. Mm -hmm. So each class will begin with everyone getting out their pencil case, their textbook, their homework and their portfolio. Show them how to add the tasks to the portfolio. For example, sit in the middle of a room and have the students gather around you, looking over your shoulder and show them how you proceed, how you have labeled the dividers, uh, how you put activities into different um, uh, sections, etc. This demonstration, simple as it seems, allows the students to visually understand how a portfolio becomes an organizational tool that keeps their materials neat and ready, readily available for study or evaluation. Now, uh, students appreciate knowing ahead of time that there will be games, role plays, etc. This gives them something to look forward to and sometimes to dread because there will be tests too. So spend the first week or so doing each of the activities while setting up each portfolio section. Be agile in presenting the tasks, perhaps presenting three or four tasks in, uh, in the first classes. Show them what the activity is, the assessment standards that are involved and what all will end up represented in that portfolio. 
So remind them that the purpose is so that they are familiar with the task and clear about the expectations. So by this time, the class will have a clear understanding of each section, the tasks that will be included, your expectation, and they have had practice with individual tasks. Now, it's time to discuss maintenance and individualization, but I'll be sharing more ideas in another video. So I hope that this brief introduction has at least stirred your curiosity and give it a try. So this is all for today. I'm going to share some uh, references, useful resources with you, uh, some things that you can look at in order to get more information. If you want to contact me, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, on YouTube, in my blog, WordPress, and of course, you can always contact me on, uh, on my email address, annie.altamiranotrainer at gmail.com. All right, so this is all for today. See you soon. Bye.